Okay, hey guys, so here's your much requested video on thesis. So thesis, we remember from the handout earlier that thesis needs to have a what, a how, and specificity, that those are the keys to having a strong thesis. I think most of us understand that the what in a thesis is what from the text you are going to explore. An essay is the exploration of an idea and the what in the thesis is what are you going to explore. Um, if you're writing in response to David Brooks, what from the text, Brooks' ideas, are you going to explore? If you are writing in response to Polish American culture in Chicago, you know, and you're writing a cultural analysis essay on that, what from Polish American culture in Chicago are you specifically going to explore? I think most of you guys have that. Um, Real quick, the Barney the Dinosaur thesis that was on the handout didn't have a how, and you're correct. That was just an example of a very specific what. Barney the Dinosaur is a symbol of capitalist oppression. You want a specific what, because the more specificity, the better your focus. It's like the sharper your scalpel, the digger you can deep in the digger you can deeper you can dig in the autopsy. Um, you don't want to go at it with a butter knife or a speckle brush. That would be bad. Um, specificity equals focus, and your thesis is all about controlling the focus of your essay. What? I think we got that. The how is trickier. The how is how will your essay resonate with a reader? How will your essay really touch that deep human stuff that really gets someone's attention? So bear with me a second. As writers, we're trying to communicate. Writing is thinking, writing is communication. Communication does not happen in a vacuum. Um, very rarely do we want to be the kind of person who stands in the corner and talks to himself and says, oh, Brent, how was your day? Oh, well, I had a good day. Well, that's great, Brent. I had a good day, too, because I'm Brent and you're Brent. Those people who talk to themselves in the corner, we think they're kind of loco. Human beings want to be understood. Human beings want to be heard. It's one of the most important parts of our being because we have voices we don't want to feel alone. Therefore, when you write an essay, you want people to read it. You want to say something of value. And I know, we're in school. And in the grand scheme of things, no one's really reads artifacts. No one's really reading these essays except for moi, yours truly. Um, but if we just pretend we're writing for me, we just pretend we're writing for school, that limits our voice, that limits our resonance. Um, you should always pretend you're writing to grab as most people as possible. That you're writing to be the person, not talking to themselves in the corner, but you're writing to be the person who respects their voice and thinks they deserve an audience. Um, and that's why you want to be resonant. You want people to hear you. Um, you want your ideas to resonate. So that's the how. How can you capture an audience? So I always say you want to pretend you're writing an essay that could potentially be in the newest issue of Rolling Stone. So someone has to go to the dentist's office, so they're waiting for 30 minutes, and oh, they pick up the magazines that the dentist subscribes to. One happens to be Rolling Stone. And I pick it up, and I'm reading about celebrity gossip, and there's something tragic going on, and I don't know, you know, it's Rolling Stone, some article. And then, oh, wait a second. Here's an article about young women today and how the dating frontier has changed and women are a lot like the Lone Ranger. Oh, that's kind of fascinating. And then you go read it and you're like, oh, David Brooks, you're really talking about, you know, the current generation. You're talking about something as timeless as dating, the birds and the bees. As a human, that talks to me. Like, maybe I'm not dating anymore, but once upon a time I did. Maybe my kids will one day. Um, and so it's flirting with the deeper human sticky stuff that resonates with a reader. Um, <laughs> You really need your writing to do that. <clears throat> so we'll go back to Barney the Dinosaur. Barney the Dinosaur is a symbol of capitalist oppression. There's a what there. I know exactly what that essay is going to be about, but why should I care? I guess we live in a capitalist country. If I was kind of an economic, political guy, I would care a little bit. But it doesn't, like, make me listen. So a way to make that paragraph, that thesis, potentially more resonant would be um, through mass media today and the appeal of cartoons, Barney the Dinosaur, as a symbol of capitalist oppression, is misleading our children. I don't know, I just pulled that completely out of my butt. 
but something where it's misleading our children or cartoons are bad or propaganda gets a little bit more like, whoa, whoa. It's a little bit of a fight in words. I get a little bit more invested. Um, I don't usually give you guys examples of other students' work because that can limit you. Um, I used to do some acting and directing, and there's an old phrase called do as I do, where when you first give an actor an instructions to read a line, I love you, Janet, even though I can't afford to pay my rent, um, that actor can read that line, I love you, Janet, even though I can't afford to pay my rent, and add any emotion that they see fit. They can add any inflection or subtext, and they can really bring to life that line for themselves. That's the actor's job to add depth and color to the, to the script. But if I'm the director, and I say, hey, actor, you need to read that line like this. Oh, Jenny, I love you, even though I can't pay my rent. I have just performed for the director. As the director, in my position of authority, I've performed for the actor one potential way to read that line. And that actor is going to internalize that as the right way to read that line because that's what the person in authority told him to do, him or her to do. Therefore, the infinite possibilities, the infinite emotions and inflections that that actor could have brought to that line had now been limited to one. And it destroys that person's unique voice. In writing, I want you guys to play in the sandbox. I want you guys to see what your unique voice is. It's more important that you get to know who you are and how you think and how you talk, how you really think through deep, sticky things, than just you got a good grade in English 101. Um, so very rarely do I give you examples of essays because I don't want you to see the do as I do and be limited. That said, I'm going to give you an example of a strong thesis. Uh, this was a former student of mine. She wrote her cultural analysis essay on the culture of she called it prostitutes, um, you know, when they have the little babies on TV and they're doing beauty queen contests at like four, five, six, seven years old. And her thesis was, we are setting up our children to fail when we raise them with a pageantry mindset that equates beauty as success. Again, we are setting up our children to fail when we raise them with a pageantry mindset that equates beauty with success. Um, there you go, you have a thesis. What is this essay going to be about? It's going to be about the pageantry mindset, beauty as success. That's pretty much what they're going to dig up. And how does that relate? Why as a reader should I read this? Because we're setting up our children to fail. Um, you know, failure, growth, children. These are, you know, bigger, stickier human ideas. That's what you want the resonance in your thesis to be. It comes from your how. People should want to read your work. You, as a writer, should want people to listen to you. It's a human need. need. Oh, you know, if you're all emo, you say, no one understands me. I don't want you to be emo. <laughs> I want people to understand you. So be resonant in your theses. Um, the other reason why you need a how in your thesis is, remember this picture? The how in your thesis pretty much controls the concept-based topics. If you don't have a how in your thesis, you don't know your big resonant human ideas, and so it's harder to, in your paragraphs, have a resonant leading idea. And then, later on, after you've done argument evidence, and then you start weaving back your textual analysis to your argument, you have to weave back resonant analysis to your topic. If you don't have a how in your thesis, you're not going to have a resonant topic, and therefore you're not going to have resonant analysis. You're like hamstringing your essay. Just like if you don't have a very good what in your thesis, you're not going to have strong args, and then you're not going to have strong textual analysis. Writing an essay is like weaving a basket. Everything is so interconnected. If you pull a string here, it weakens here. If you tighten it here, it tightens here. I really need you guys to realize that your thesis informs the whole essay, and you need to work on resonant topics. Resonance in your thesis and resonant analysis, because it really is what makes writing come alive. Uh, it's not just between you, the writer, and the essay you're writing, where I, Brent, think this about David Brooks. I, Brent, think this about David Brooks. I, Brent, think this about David Brooks. Because no one wants to read that. What we want to read is, I, Brent, think this about David Brooks, and now I'm connecting it to you. I, Brent, think this about David Brooks, and now I'm connecting it to you. And this looking up and connecting with your audience is your resonant analysis, where you pivot out to the bigger world. But you can only get there if you have resonant topics that lead the way and that all starts from the how in your thesis. Hopefully I answered some questions about thesis crafting and resonance.